Haven't you heard? All the cool kids have been slapping down external graphics cards next to their Macs lately. And Nvidia just released Mac OS drivers for their latest 10 series Pascal GPUs. Look, everyone is super excited, but in typical Snazzy Labs fashion, it seems time to crash the party because things aren't as great as they sound. Before we talk about individual graphics card performance and before you run out and buy a bunch of new gear, it's important to know that there are some major caveats. So the newest 2016 MacBook Pro uses Thunderbolt 3, but all of Apple's other computers use Thunderbolt 2. Now it's important to know this because Thunderbolt 2 only uses PCIe by 4, which means you're only getting a fraction of the GPU's performance, usually from 50 to 80%, depending on the card you're using. So in short, Thunderbolt 2, which is likely on the Mac you own, is a huge bottleneck. Now Thunderbolt 3, which again is on the new MacBook Pro, and we can assume all future new Macs, offers more than 90% GPU performance, which is amazing. But it's not all ponies and rainbows, because as Dave2D explains in his wonderful video, getting eGPUs to even work in the first place, and then to keep them working after even just the most minor of OS updates, is a complete nightmare. And it's even worse on Thunderbolt 3 than it is on Thunderbolt 2. As if that wasn't bad enough, each Mac model has its own weird quirks. For example, my 2013 Mac Pro works great in Mac OS with an eGPU, but the machine refuses to boot into Windows with the card attached. Conversely, my 5K Retina iMac is wonderful in Windows, but it will not work in Mac OS. There are very few Mac models, be them laptops or desktops or what have you, that will work in both operating systems. What I'm trying to say is that Apple does not officially support eGPUs, and it shows because it is a huge pain in the rear to get working. So let's say you're foolish like me and cost incompatibility doesn't bother you. What kind of performance can you expect? Well, I'm going to talk about gaming and GPU accelerated video editing with Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. Starting with gaming and chill out PCMR people, we're gonna to get to a conclusion that you will very much enjoy. So quit worrying on the keyboards. You haven't even talked about anything yet. Unage in Heaven reveals unsurprising results. The more expensive cards yield higher frame rates than the less expensive cards. However, they only perform at about 55 to 60% of what they would on a PC. None of that really matters though if you cannot game on Mac OS, which you kinda can't. A combination of Microsoft's proprietary DirectX, Apple's history of putting super low-end GPUs into their Macs, and Apple's weird refusal to support the Vulkan API means that very few games get ported to Mac OS. And they run in OpenGL, which is dismal. In fact, the latest big AAA title is Tomb Raider from 2013. At 1440p, Tomb Raider, uh, with ultra settings, mind you, runs at playable frame rates, but the results are underwhelming for a four-year-old game. And you can see based on these similar benchmarks from you know, three cards that cost drastically different means that Thunderbolt 2 is quite a bit of a bottleneck. Now, if you own a Mac that can boot into Windows and you still want an eGPU, you can see from a video that I did last year that it's possible to get decent results. But don't try. Save yourself the headache and the cost of an eGPU and just build a PC. Even better, build a Hackintosh so you can dual boot into Mac OS to do your work, and then when you want a game, boot into Windows and you'll have zero problems and maximum performance. And to be honest, building a Hackintosh is actually probably not much harder, if not maybe slightly easier than getting this friggin' eGPU to work. And stability of a Hackintosh is arguably much better than that of an eGPU. I can update my Hackintosh without any problem. Every single update, I've had to re-go in and change stuff with this. It is a nightmare. So Mac eGPUs only make sense for one crowd, and that is video editors. Even then, it's borderline. I created two benchmark videos in both Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. I added a lot of effects and stabilization to create a complicated timeline where the GPUs could really do their work. Now in Premiere, the 980 Ti actually exported more quickly than the 1080 Ti. To be fair, the Nvidia drivers are beta, but they're either crappy drivers or Adobe needs to optimize for Pascal on Mac because a two-year-old card should not be faster than a brand new card that costs three times as much. That said, the card certainly helped create a faster export. 
Surprisingly, the AMD RX 480 actually did really, really well using Apple's Metal API that Adobe Premiere supports as of the latest macOS update. In Final Cut, which does not support CUDA, the NVIDIA cards have, uh, they have to run in OpenCL and they barely match the performance of the weak sauce four-year-old AMD GPUs that are in my Mac Pro running on metal. However, you will see yet again, the RX 480 comes in first place with 15% faster export times thanks to the metal API. So for video editing, forget Nvidia. In both Premiere and Final Cut, the RX 480 is by far the best value. However, whether or not $500 plus costs for the card, the Thunderbolt cable and the eGPU dock is worth a mere 15% performance boost is up for you to decide. In summation, if you're on a Thunderbolt 2 Mac, avoid eGPUs entirely. If you're on a Thunderbolt 3 Mac, I would strongly suggest you reconsider because getting the thing to work and to keep it working is a bit of a chore. Let's hope that Apple finally starts to give a crap about high-end graphics because until then, the best options appear to be run Windows or a Hackintosh. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, you didn't make it to this point, so who gives a crap? There are more videos. Click those. They're awesome. And as always, stay snazzy.